Whoa! Who is that? Oh, hi, boys and girls. Yes, it's Mr. Fred. Welcome to my office. You know, if you want, you can call this my neighborhood. You're probably wondering why I'm here at work today. Well, you see, boys and girls, I'm considered an essential employee. And what that means is I have a very important job, and I need to come to work every day in case anybody needs me here in Sutton. Now, the other reason why I'm here at work, you see, my wife, she prefers our social distancing to be 20 miles apart. Good morning, Chief Toll, and welcome to Mr. Friend's Neighborhood. Good morning, Mr. Friend. I'm sure the students of Sutton are very excited to learn more about the Sutton Police Chief and all the important work the police department does to keep us all safe. So what I'd first like to do is just maybe get a little background about you and, and um, you know, when did you first realize that you wanted to be a police officer, Chief? Well, I don't believe I have a specific date in mind. It was probably when I was younger, uh, most likely in, in high school at some point. Now, did you um, have to go to college for law enforcement to become a chief? Uh, you don't have to. Um, it's certainly, a, nowadays, it's a, it's a recommended uh, requirement. Uh, but there's no, you know, set deadline uh, that you need, you need a college uh, education. Now, did you go to college? Yes. And so where did you go to college? I got my, my undergrad from Westfield State College and my graduate degree from Anna Maria in Paxton. Oh, very good. So you have a master's degree in criminal justice? Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so is, is there special training that you need to be a police officer? There is. Uh, right now, the uh, basic re recruit academy is uh, 23 weeks long, and uh, it goes through a diverse set of, uh, you know, curriculum, starting out with physical fitness. Uh, it's more or less, uh, it's geared toward military boot camp type style. Um, you know, so we learn everything from criminal law, search and seizure, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, problem people, uh, a lot of social issues. Uh, now they're touching on uh, in the academy, such as like, you know, the opioid epidemic and things like that. But uh, there is a, a basic requirement in mass uh, to become a police officer. You, you need to attend a full-time police academy. Excellent. Now, would you recommend, what, what route would you recommend? Would you recommend maybe getting into uh, police in the beginning, maybe right out, of, right out of high school or a few years out of high school? and then going to school after that, or would you recommend first going the college route? Um, what, what I always recommend to people is, is get your foot in the door somewhere in any police department. Uh, even if you can get in part-time as a dispatcher or full-time as a dispatcher, and that way there you can kind of learn the ropes of a, of a police department and, and get to know the people inside the department and they can get to know you. And uh, you can make a decision from there on whether or not that's something that you want to pursue. And I say that because we've actually had people come in here and work as a dispatcher and just, you know, after working a few shifts, just say, you know, this isn't for me. I'm not comfortable doing the things that I'm required to do. And, you know, sure. so uh, it's, it's a good avenue. Um, you know, as far as the, the specific degree of criminal justice, that's great if you're steadfast and certain on that's where you want to go, uh, but you kind of limit yourself into an area, uh, you know, as far as job opportunities with, with just the criminal justice degree. All right. Um, so what are some of the challenges the police department has had to face um, during the COVID-19 crisis? Uh, fortunately, you know, the challenges for us are probably one, just keeping everybody healthy. Uh, because in the department our size, you can understand if you got one or two guys that are out uh, you know, with this virus, it, it, it certainly has a great effect on your staffing. Um, fortunately for us, we had a lot of the protective gear that we are uh, wearing every day. Uh, we had obtained that over the course of a, a few years ago. You know, the PPE mask, the eyewear, the gloves. Uh, the gloves is something that, you know, we generally wear every day, even prior to this. Um, so, the, you know, I'd say the basic challenge for us is 
not much different than the average citizen, you know, trying to practice social distancing, um, you know, keeping our area clean, keeping our hands clean. Uh, we've set up workstations and cleaning stations throughout the police department. Uh, we, we clean the police department regularly with a, you know, a disinfectant solution. So it's, it's not much different um, than what the normal person has gone through. I think uh, probably the biggest aid that we have uh, is your training video on, on washing your hands. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you for I, that. I took that video and I, I made uh, every shift watch it. And within a few days, you know, it caught on, even though it's not your birthday. This is the way you need to wash your hands. Oh, thank so, you for that. Thank you. Know. you. Um, what can uh, students and families do um, to help you uh, during this crisis as, a, as the police department? Um, you know, we're pretty self sufficient down here right now. Uh, I think the best thing they can do to help us is obviously just behave themselves. And uh, secondly, do whatever is recommended by the CDC, social distancing, you know, stay at home. Um, and, you know, comes back to, again, your uh, video in the first segment of uh, Mr. Friend's Neighborhood is uh, just be nice to each other. And uh, it seems to work out. Fortunately, we haven't really had that many issues. That's great. Uh, with regard to this. Um, you know, we've, we've had to speak to a couple of people and a few uh, occasions about, you know, crowds and things like that. But for the most part, everyone's been behaved. Excellent. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me today. Uh, I also want to thank you for the last 10 years. Been, you've been such a great friend to me and to the school department. You've provided anything we've needed. And I'd just like, like to share one example of our friendship. You know, each year on the anniversary of that bus sliding down the hill backwards, I notice that you take time out of your very busy schedule to text me that video to remind me of one of the darkest days of my life. And I can't thank you enough for that. <laughs> that's that's stunning, you know, with all intentions on training, uh, Mr. Friend. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, thank you again, Chief Toll. And um, for the boys and girls, please keep safe. And remember, be kind to your parents and to your siblings. And hopefully next week, we'll talk to you again with Chief Falcido, the fire chief in the town of Sutton. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.